We're going to be collecting centaurides or the striped bark scorpion, um, and this canyon is full of them. Okay, the scorpions are nocturnal. They come out at night. They fluoresce under UV light, and we will use the light to spot them, and then we use forceps to pick them up by the tail, put them in plastic bags. It's so rocky and perfect, but I don't see anything. Oh, come on. Gosh, he's so fast. Oh, awesome. He what knows we're here. Like? Yeah, let's see if he comes. Come on out. So I probably started collecting scorpions in 1999 when I was in graduate school, um, first year of graduate school. And I was mostly working by myself on a very small scale. We collect the scorpions because we need the venom, uh, because part of what we do is just to um, actually isolate the individual toxins from the venom and then study how they manipulate our nervous and our neuromuscular system. How do they cause pain and potentially death? Most of what we got last night was centurion's potatoes. Um, but it's possible there could be some hot in the bag. So we'll go through and actually separate those out. It's an integrative project and it's on a huge scale. We go from cell to ecosystem. I could not do what I do without the help of a lot of undergraduates, graduate students, and my husband, um, who is my collaborator and colleague. So I study a group of scorpions that belong to the genus Centroides, um, commonly known as the bark scorpions, and they make venom that is uh, intensely painful. Some people describe it as uh, the feeling or sensation of being burned with a cigarette or being branded, and that can be followed by a sensation you feel like somebody's hit you with a hammer, so um, an intense throbbing pain. So in the other corner, the predator on these scorpions is the scorpion mouse, uh, belongs to the genus Onychomys, and they attack and kill and eat these scorpions. And they can get stung during their interactions, but the, the scorpion mice are actually resistant to the toxins that would not only kill them, but the toxins that cause this intense pain. We feel like if we can understand that mechanism at the biochemical and the molecular and the physiological level, we might be able to develop better pain treatments that shut down pain signals without being addictive or having lots of unpleasant side effects. Okay. Yeah, so what we've been doing right now is just coming out here during the day before it gets dark and planning what we're gonna do tonight. The kind of habitat where you find the most bark scorpions tends to be sort of a middle band along, along a hill, a lot of cactus, small bunch grass. So hopefully the weather will hold, the weather could will rain, hold. Well, might be beautiful, might got, not rain. We got Almost over 100, 100 last, last night. night, which was not bad. Yeah, it's always a, it's a gamble, but. are not aggressive. They will try to go to the opposite end of a, a terrarium. I'm more worried about someone getting bitten by a rattlesnake or falling down a hill and breaking an ankle or a leg. So, so there are other things that we worry more about. Probably the cactus, mm -hmm. the sharp spines on the cactus. So we have lots of talks about safety. The general rule is if it's smaller than a quarter, we'll leave it alone. But he's way too small for us to collect, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's one. He's on top of I'm just gonna, just the moss, you know. Oh, it looks so different. Yeah. I know, they're so beautiful when they fluoresce. <laughs> okay, there you go. Let's see if I can grab it. So sometimes if they run, if you blow on them really hard, they just stop. And I think it's just because it just overwhelms them with like this sensory overload. Oops, missed the first time, yeah. Got him. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, it's about 20 in there. <laughs> Amber, good job. I'm sure the guys are, who are there will come back with like 100 in their bag or something. 
we have so many questions that are unanswered, and not just um, the scorpion venom. There are so many questions about the evolution of the toxins and how they work, just the physiology, the biochemistry. And when you get out here, you realize the desert, it's alive. Just the diversity of animals, it's the diversity of interactions among those animals and the interesting ecosystem. For me, yeah, having a project where you can do both field work and lab work is just exciting. <laughs> no, I can see myself being out here until I can no longer get out here. I have the best job in the world. I also study dreams because I'm fortunate to be working in the Dream and Nightmare Laboratory. And our lab is, uh, is pretty special in the sense that there are a lot of sleep labs around the world, but it's pretty rare to have a lab specifically dedicated to scientific study of dreaming.